Welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video, we're gonna be going through today's training session, uh, which is primarily a deadlift day with some lower body accessories. Uh, in this, we're gonna have some commentary just updating you guys on my programming, my training, business, uh, and life overall. So sit back, relax, and enjoy today's YouTube video. Okay, so this week is a deload week. This deadlift session, we're not working up to a very heavy set. I believe it's a top single of 435. So I'm just going to progressively go up anywhere between 50 to 90 pounds until I'm up to that top set. Then we have some back offs. If you wanna go, then I'll be so lonely. If you leave and do it, let me down slowly. I know we're long gone. Deads are one of my weakest lifts. I have a lot of things that I need to correct with them. One of the biggest things with them that I'm working on is pulling slack out of the bar. Meaning I'm pulling kind of the bend that you may see in a deadlift bar itself and getting myself nice and tight before I actually initiate the lift itself. So a good way to kind of visualize this is I'm putting 50% power and then 60 and then dialing up 70, 80% then I'm locking my hips into position and then 100% power the weight comes up. In that, I need to imagine my arms kind of like hooks and think more so about pushing into the floor, spreading the ground, as opposed to pulling into the bar itself. And that's done wonders for my deadlift so far. I'm kind of excited to see how I progress with my deads this next phase. If you wanna go, then I'll be so lonely. If you're leaving, baby, let me down slowly. Let me down. One quick little tip for you guys, strapping up the belt now that I'm to my top working set. A lot of individuals crank their belt super, super tight for their deadlifts. This hinders the amount that you can actually brace, ultimately making it to where you lift less weight. With the deadlift itself, you should be able to fit a full palm all the way through the belt. You should be comfortable to breathe in. Since you are bent over, there's like a lot more diaphragmic pressure. So it's not so much from a support standpoint, where the squat, for instance, you can crank that guy on and get some additional support from the belt itself. So, with the deadlifts, don't crank that belt super tight. So we're waiting on a piece of equipment. We've got a member on it. He's got one more set left. While we're waiting, I want to talk to you guys about my diet and some of the things that I've discovered and some of the changes that I've made that have been kind of revolutionary. So in my mind, I kind of thought I had a good grasp on how to eat and nutrition and all those different things, um, but always learning. So the past few weeks, you guys may have noticed in the last video, I talked about my struggles with my appetite just for this whole year. Um, it's been kind of like an ungodly appetite to the point to where my cravings are through the roof and it's almost to the point to where willpower is completely out the window like no matter how hard I try to stay disciplined no matter how hard I tried to uh, to power through and fight those urges it was next to impossible to actually control it um, and I've never experienced something like that in my life before so I was doing a little bit of research um, I was listening to this podcast by uh, Professor Andrew Huberman um, if you guys aren't familiar with him, I highly recommend his stuff. And he was talking about uh, these different neurological synapses that your brain has in control of your appetite. Uh, and he discussed how if you're deficient in 
lipids in your LDL and HDL levels are off balance, that it can sometimes give you this sort of hormonal response or this sort of response in your system that gives you those sugar cravings to where you just want the urge for something sweet. Um, and that's not what your body needs in those instances. If instead you give yourself some omega-3s, omega-6s, some fatty acids, whether it's through you know, some sort of fish, some nuts, uh, something that's super rich in those omegas, that's going to satiate that craving if you're deficient in those omegas. So for me, I decided to try that. Maybe I'm a, you know, a deficient in my omegas, and that was the cure that fixed it. So started eating some salmon every single day for my breakfast, started tossing in some more nuts, some more fatty acids, and that's helped my appetite tremendously. I still have cravings, I still get hungry, I still have all those things, but it's now to the point to where willpower can help me stay on track with my nutrition. So that could be new to you guys. It's brand new knowledge to me. If you've been struggling with that issue, you can get some blood work, see if your stuff's low or not, or you can just trial and error like I did uh, and pinpoint the issue down. So. So as you guys know, it's a new month. It's November, no shave November. This is about 10 days worth of beard growth here. I absolutely hate it. So I'm gonna end up shaving it at one point, but I'm debating on whether or not I should keep the stash for a little bit. If you guys think I should keep the stash, comment down below, let me know. Okay, so another little workout update. We've done some sumo belt squats, sumo stance belt squats. Those were about RPE 8 throughout the, the entirety of those sets, four sets of 12. Then we did some pendulet rows, which suck ass. Uh, we did four sets of 10 uh, with 225 there. Now we're on to some glute ham raises, just going up to parallel with these guys with any form of hyperextension or glute ham raise hip extension, if it's a glute bridge, whatever it may be. One of the best cues that I give for overall glute activation with these movements is giving yourself that posture. Think about rounding yourself out or pulling your hips into your ribs. Or another way you can view it is think about pulling your crotch in between your legs. With that, it's gonna allow for a lot greater glute activation and take some strain away from the lower back. Okay, so we're taking a little breather. I'm gonna go one more set to failure on those hamstring curls. But in the meantime, I wanna to talk to you guys about some updates with the gym because I haven't given you guys any gym updates as of recent. So we're in the back half of the Train to Win facility where we have all the brick walls, high ceilings. We've got this full rig set up with six different barbell stations, all the pull-up areas for the CrossFit type oak. But with this, we've gotta upgrade it for our team training that has been shown to be something that's in pretty high demand. Uh, and for those of you guys who've been following me for a while, you do know that we have a second facility that we did have intentions of dedicating to be a team training facility. I will have some updates about that in some future videos. But as of right now, one of the biggest changes that we're gonna have is ripping this whole rig out and replacing it with some new racks. So if you guys have seen the rack setups that we have in our front space where I was just training, we're gonna do something very, very similar back here. Uh, we're going to put in a big order for six different racks, uh, which totals around eight to nine thousand. Um, right now, we get free shipping, so it's a pretty prime time for us to be able to get some of that equipment in. 
Um, and with that, we're going to be able to progress, get some more plates, get some more specialty bars and whatnot for our groups that we can have dedicated just for this backspace. One more little thing that we'll be changing back here. You guys may notice that the environment is very like gloom and doom, like which is kind of like, you kind of want that for a warehouse type gym, but it's too green and dingy. So we'll be replacing all these LED lights with something that's a little brighter, this bay door. In the future, we still have plans of swapping out to have some windows, some natural light, as well as tossing an emergency exit there. Um, but that are the change. <laughs> Those are the changes we're making back here. Fuck, let's get this set. <sighs> That's a wrap on today's training session. Again, today was a deload, so we didn't get super vigorous with the big compounds, but we still got after it with our accessories, letting the body recover up a little bit this week before we hit it again pretty hard next week. Uh, now I'm gonna head home, get a post-workout meal in before I have to be here late this evening with all my athletes. But there is another part of my training regimen that I didn't tell you guys about that I will be implementing uh, to bring up a lot of weak points within my physique. Uh, and I just got notification that a piece of equipment for that said regimen arrived at my house. So if you guys want to see me set that guy up this evening, stay tuned. We are back at the house. We hit up the grocery store to get a few things to finish out this post-workout meal. Uh, so we got some creamer rice, we got some cherries, a power crunch bar, some protein powder. I'm going to slap this all together and show you guys the final product. And here's the final product. Now we're gonna eat this up, get myself cleaned up a little bit, head to the gym, and then that special part of my regimen that I'm adding that I told you guys about will be later in this video. It'll be a few seconds for you guys, but probably about five, six hours for me. So stay tuned. And just like that, we're back at the house, went to the gym, serviced all my clients, and the package is here. So this is a package from Titan Fitness. I typically am not a huge fan of Titan Fitness, all the stuff we've gotten from them for the gym has been cheap and kind of worn out pretty, pretty fast. Uh, but that's because it gets used quite a bit. So I got this piece for my house uh, and I'll be the only one using it. So I don't think it's gonna get damaged too easily and the reviews of it were pretty sick. I'm not gonna tell you guys what it is until I have it pieced out and put together. So stay tuned for that. Here are all the parts. I will catch you guys when it's all put together. All right, we're a little more than halfway through building this piece of equipment and I cross-threaded a nut and I need an extra wrench to help put it together because I can't tighten the nuts as tight as I would like with just one socket. So um, I need to get the rest of the tools and finish it tomorrow. Uh, but you guys are probably wondering, Tate, what the hell is it? It is a seated calf raise. Um, as you guys may know, I do have some calves that aren't the sickest. So with this, I'm gonna have it here at the house. I'm gonna load it up with some older plates that we had at the gym uh, and train calves for four to five working sets uh, to failure for at least three to four days a week to see what type of progress and results we can get. Um, because I've always complained that I don't have good calves, bad genetics, whatever, just making dumb excuses. So now we're done making excuses. We're actually gonna make it happen. So. Uh, with that being said, this is going to include this YouTube video. If you enjoyed this video, enjoyed this style of content, engage with the video by commenting, liking, subscribing, all that good stuff. And I will be able to catch you guys in the next one.